You are welcome here. You are welcome. Uh, good to see you all. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Ventura Center for Spiritual Living. I'm Reverend Bonnie Rose, and it is great to have you here. And also a great shout out to our friends on Facebook and also to our friends on YouTube that will watch us later on. Thank you so much for joining us here in this Cathedral of Kindness. And I'm going to pass the word. Oh, wait, before I pass the word, okay. let's do our little thing, okay? Okay, would you find somebody, perhaps somebody that you don't know, and ask them what drew you to church today? Not like what vehicle you took, but why, why did you come to church today? <laughs> Good job. This is the universal symbol for please sit down. Okay, all righty. So uh, let's pass the word to Lonnie. Bonnie, so you know what brought me to church today? What? Miss Carol's cookies. Miss Carol's cookies, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's why everybody came to church. Yeah, yeah that's what well, I'm thinking. Yeah. And, and to have some fun. Yeah. And maybe listen to you mm. and the choir and Chris Tinkling and our musicians. I could go on yeah. and on. Yeah. And okay, I Hughes won't. reading. Hughes, Hughes reading. Is always reading. So good. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I always forget you. Yeah. And I you're know. right there. <laughs> so obvious. So. Mm. Welcome, and if you're at home, uh, what we want you to do is like turn your TV on or turn your whatever you're listening on, on and off, because that's what you would have experienced if you were here with our tech. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But the All universe right. is blessing us, and we're so happy that you're here to be with us. Thank you, Lonnie. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, so let's call forth Bill Hadras, who is our youth and family director. Good morning. Good morning. You guys want to come down and hang out with us? <laughs> Have a seat. There you go. Good job. Good job. Good job. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. I'm saving a spot for you right there. There you go. Good, Good morning. Job. Good morning. So as Bonnie said, I'm Bill Hadras. Do you sometimes get down on yourself because of what you can't do? or things maybe you don't like about yourself? How does that feel? Mm, not good. <laughs> mm. So I'd like you to look around and maybe even think about, are there any two people exactly the same? No. Instead of getting down on yourself, what if you embraced everything about yourself, including what you may think of as bad? <laughs> mm. If you do, you will see that is what makes you up. Only you can be you. The world needs you, needs you to be you, because no one else can be. And you have unique gifts, gifts to give the world. No one is more important than anyone else, past, present, and future. You are made of God, and therefore perfect. Because God doesn't make mistakes. Mm -hmm. How would your life be now if you could always remember this? Mm -hmm. I invite you all to repeat after me. The world needs me to be me. The world needs me to be me. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God You are the face of God I hold you in my heart a part of me. You 
<laughs> Let's have a word of prayer from Lacey, our practitioner for today. All the practitioners and ministers would stand with me to secure this prayer. I know there's only one life, and that life is God's life. God's life is the life of everyone, everywhere, all the time, no matter what. God is in each and every one of us, all of us in this center, all of us outside listening, and everyone else who isn't here or listening. I know that today is going to be a beautiful day. It's full of connection and happiness, peacefulness, calm, possibility, and everything is turning out exactly the way it's supposed to. And I know that we are so very blessed. And with that, I release my words into the universal law, knowing as I speak them, they are already so. And together we say, and, and so, so it, it is. is. Thank you. And let us continue to breathe deeply and to trust to know the divine presence that abides in each of us is fully present in all of us as we open our hearts and listen to the words of our sacred reading. Chickpea, a poem by Jalaluddin Rumi, Hazrati Mevlana, in the presence of our beloved teacher. A chickpea leaps almost over the rim of the pot where it's being boiled. Why are you doing this to me? The cook knocks him down with the ladle. Don't you try to jump out. You think I'm torturing you? I'm giving you flavor so you can mix with spices and rice and be the lovely vitality of a human being. Remember when you drank rain in the garden? That was for this. Grace first, sexual pleasure, then a boiling new life begins, and the friend has something good to eat. Eventually, the chickpea will say to the cook, boil me some more. <laughs> Hit me with the skimming spoon. I can't do this by myself. I'm like an elephant that dreams of gardens back in Hindustan and doesn't pay attention to his driver. You're my cook, my driver, my way into existence. I love your cooking. The cook says, I was once like you, fresh from the ground. Then I boiled in time and boiled in the body, two fierce boilings. My animal soul grew powerful. I controlled it with practices and boiled some more, and boiled once beyond that, and I became your teacher. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And so let us just breathe deeply and anchor into the metaphor of the chickpea. <laughs> Wondering if there's a place in our lives where we are feeling like we're being boiled. <laughs> Opening up to greater good, allowing the hard edges of the separate self that are so important, but that at some point get to fall away and surrender and to create a greater opening, a greater vessel for the I am presence, that place that some of us call God or love, spirit, higher power, whatever it is we call it, we trust that it is the true self emerging, the I am presence, which is another name for the true self that is always with us, and yet sometimes we cover it with layers. And so today as we sing, let us deeply remember that true state of consciousness, of awareness, of the awareness of being aware, that thing that we really are. And we'll know it for ourselves, but we'll also know it for every single person in this room and then to move beyond this room, remember that we are all one, that we are all one, that the entire cosmos 
that the sun, the stars, the moon, the skies, the grains of sand, and even the chickpeas are part of this oneness. And so we remember that, we anchor in that, as together we sing, I am remembering who I am. I am remembering who I am. I am remembering who I am. I am remembering. I am remembering. I am remembering who I am. I am remembering who I am. I am remembering. I am remembering. I am remembering who I am. I am remembering who I am. I am remembering. I am remembering. I am remembering who I am. I am remembering who I am. I am remembering. I am remembering. I am remembering who I am. I am remembering who I And let us breathe deeply. Remembering the divine presence, breathing in and breathing out. Remembering the sacred I am that is within us and within all things that is one. And then we breathe in once again, and then we exhale, opening our eyes as love, in love and in service to what is, as it is, and so it is play a song I wrote called uh, Amber and Smoke, but I could have called it I Am Remembering. There you go. I mean, this is synchronicity. Everything is synchronicity. Yes. <clears throat> And five freight trains Couldn't drag me into that early grave Well, I've cashed in the mistakes I've made While God rode shotgun from a million miles away I don't wake in sorrow, I don't walk in shame I don't deal in hearsay, I don't dwell in blame Sometimes it's best to forget what I know and what they say. But this ain't that time, and this ain't that day. With the heart of a chip. 
gypsy and the eyes of a child I walk these fields and let my love grow wild Born with the fever, I dare my desires I don't fear the flame, I walk through the fire I don't wake in sorrow, I don't walk in shame I don't deal in hearsay, I don't dwell in blame Sometimes it's best to forget what I know and what they say But this ain't that time and this ain't that day trail grows cold and the hillsides burn amber and smoke the sheep and the shepherd are lost on different roads I'm blinded by hate I'm blinded by hope I don't wake in sorrow I don't walk in shame I don't deal in hearsay I don't dwell in blame Sometimes it's best to forget what I know and what they say. But this ain't that time, and this ain't that day. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so um, it's my honor to introduce our guest here this morning. How many of you remember Chris Kelkar? Oh, a lot of you. Yes, okay. <laughs> yeah, Chris and Mino. So they, they used to live right around the corner from the church, and then they rudely moved to Thousand Oaks. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that, but anyway, they're happy there, right? You're happy there? Well, that's what we want, so that's good. Um, but anyway, we're, we're inviting Chris Kelkar to speak with us today. Chris is, is somewhat of an expert in this, uh, in this training called Heart Math, and so I think without further ado, I'll let Chris talk about himself, and he'll come on up here and, and uh, sit and chat with me for just a moment. Let's give him some love. Right. Good to see you. <laughs> Thanks. Hey there. So, um, welcome, Chris. It's good to see you. Thank you. Sure. Um, yeah, it's really an honor to be back here and up here on this stage. Uh, yeah. I was just thinking before service started about all the people that have been here, and I'm just like, oh, hey, <laughs> big shoes to fill. Oh, yeah, you've got, you've got big shoes to fill, but your feet are big enough, okay? <laughs> just Thank good you. to know, yeah. Yeah, so um, oddly, I left my questions over there, so I don't know what we're going to talk about. But uh, Ad lib. Okay, well, I'm going to get them just in case, because I know I gave them to you before, and I don't want to throw too many curves at you but there will be curves probably, just based on where it, where it goes. So um, why don't we go ahead and start by you telling us a little bit about what is heart math? Sure, um, okay. so, so it's interesting because when people ask me this, I end up getting tongue-tied because it's <laughs> such a funny word, right? Heart math. And some people are like, math, well, I know what that is. And other people are like, heart, well, what does that have to do with math? And so, um, Really what heart math is, is it's a very simple set of teachings and techniques to help align the heart and the emotions and the mind and essentially the body so that we act in alignment with ourselves. Mm. And so a lot of times our minds think one thing mm -hmm. and our bodies actually understand something completely different. Mm. Yeah. And so what that leads to is um, missed opportunities. It leads to um, experiences where I feel like I have to make something happen. Mm -hmm. um, and heart math is a very simple set of uh, techniques to be able to navigate life better. Mm. What's an example of when your mind is thinking something but your body is doing something else? Ah, well sitting here right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like my mind wants to be like this 
really, really competent speaker where I'm telling you everything and giving you everything that you need to know. And my body is like, okay, I'm sitting up in front of the stage and my heart is beating a little faster than it normally would. And so I'm nervous. And so what do I do with that? And so what's interesting is that these techniques, I'm actually doing one of them right now. That's how easy they are. Yeah. And, and they really involve breathing and they involve um, connecting to emotions. Mm. And with that combination, it's a really, really powerful way to be able to release the physiology that's going on in my body. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I like to joke that you know, human beings are actually both divine and just a bag of chemicals. Yeah, yeah. And when those chemicals are going, <clears throat> there's nothing that I can want to do to change those chemicals mm. unless I actually address it in the body. In the body, right. Can I stop you for one sec? Because I think this is a great audience participation moment. Will you turn to somebody and say, I am a divine bag of chemicals? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Good job, y'all. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, and I guess there are degrees as to, as to how much the chemicals are in charge. Yeah, I think there are degrees as to how much the chemicals are in charge. Yeah. And, and actually, what I would say is the chemicals are actually always in charge. We oh. just like to believe that we're in charge. Yeah, good point. Thank you for that. And so yeah. the chemicals are either, we are either aligned with the chemicals or we're not aligned with the chemicals. I see. When we're aligned with the chemicals, I think I'm in charge. <laughs> when I'm not aligned with the chemicals, then I am clearly not in charge. Wow, interesting. I've been doing it, I've been doing it wrong all these years. <laughs> Look at me lying in church pretending that I know what I'm doing. Okay. Anyway, uh, so. <laughs> so um, tell us, I want to get back to that topic again, but before, before we do, I want to ask you a little bit about how have you benefited specifically from heart math? Yeah, thanks. Um, so most of you don't know this, some of you do, but in 2010, I was actually diagnosed with leukemia. And that actually, I would say that that was a defining moment in my life where I really sort of started on my spiritual path. Mm -hmm. Before then, I could talk about emotions, I could talk about spirituality, but that was sort of the thunk that got me there. Um, <clears throat> before that, I was not connected with my body. Um, in fact, I still remember sitting in a workshop where um, the facilitator said, oh, emotions live in your body. And I was like, what do you mean emotions live in my body? They live up here. Mm. And no, they don't. They live in the body. And so what heart math has done is it's given me a much more intimate connection with my body. It's given me ways to align myself where I can actually feel my emotions. I know the impact that my emotions have on me. And what it's led to is more flow in my life. Mm, more flow. More flow, uh -huh. more, I'll say, openness <clears throat> to mysticism. Mm. Nice, yeah. yeah. To the things that um, allow me to navigate life better and allow me to be happier. Uh, nice. Yeah, I think that's why, um, without knowing why, actually, that I said you're a divine bag of chemicals. We're a divine bag of chemicals because the chemicals, you know, it's like, like some, there are some teachings that say we have to annihilate the ego, right? And some teachings may say we have to annihilate those chemicals that are, that are taking charge and ruining our lives, but the chemicals are there for a good reason, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. We're, we're here, we've been given this gift of life. Mm -hmm. There's a reason we've been given this gift of life. Yeah. And, and for me, it's experiencing life to its fullest mm -hmm. that is the experience that we're here for. Yeah. And so getting myself out of my body and controlling my body in a way that denies my body isn't what I'm here for. Right. And so there's a fullness and a richness and a color and a vibrancy that's available in making friends with my body mm -hmm. and making friends with those chemicals mm -hmm. and really being able to navigate those better. Mm, nice. You know, last week the reading was, I don't know if any, if any of y'all are here, but uh, there was a reading about how we always talk about a, a, a chicken running around with its head off. And the reading said we're actually more like a head running around without a chicken. Right? And that reminds me, when you said you were in your head and completely denying 
the wisdom of the body. That's what it reminded me of. We've, we've had several teachers here that, that uh, dwell in the wisdom of the body. You want to raise your hand? I mean, Bernie's one of them, and yeah, a few others. Yeah, Lita, yeah, Pam, right? Pamela, rather. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and then in terms of your, your, your diagnosis that you got in, in uh, 2010, so you applied heart math, and, and like, was there anything in particular specifically that you could navigate better, like any particular incident that jumps out? Um, sure, I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. So, Bonnie, you talked about us moving. So yes. we, we went to Thousand Oaks, and, and so we basically found a house that we loved, we bought it, and then we decided to gut everything inside of it mm -hmm. to make it our own. <laughs> and so in the process of doing this, things started working really well, they started flowing beautifully, and then all of a sudden it felt like we hit a brick wall. And one of the brick walls that we hit were the severe rains that we had. Just a week ago, you mean? No, no, the oh. ones back oh, the other in ones. April okay. in winter. Okay. You know, where it was like week after week of severe rains. Mm. And so, lo and behold, we had a leak in the roof. Mm. And so, all of a sudden, water started coming into one of the bedrooms, and it started puckering the ceiling. And I was pulling my hair up because we're in the midst of this remodel, and everything's going in at that point and things are getting painted, and there's this giant water postule <laughs> that's sitting, <laughs> nice. sitting in, on the ceiling, and things are just getting worse and worse. And so I am desperately trying to get a roofer out to the house. And as you probably can imagine, during heavy rains, it's really hard to get a roofer out because everybody wants a roofer. Mm -hmm. And so I am searching everywhere for a roofer, and I'm getting tighter and tighter and more controlling and calling people and like demanding that they come out. And so finally, I was like, all right, something's going on here. There's something I'm meant to get from this. And so I just basically used this technique as well as some of the other ones that I've learned. And I just breathed into it. And I calmed my body down. And that allowed me to actually ask for help. Not demand help in a controlling way, but ask for help. Mm -hmm. And so I went to the house. And I was talking to some of the contractors there. And the lead contractor, I was saying, hey, you know, I don't know what to do, but you know, my, I'm having a lot of trouble getting a roofer out to come out and look at the roof. And he goes, oh, see that guy over there that's been working on your drywall? He's actually a professional roofer. Wow. He's been under my nose the whole time. Wow. <laughs> and so talk about a tangible thing of everything you're meant to get is in front of you. I just have to be open to receive it. Yes. It was literally that. It was literally that. And, and if I hadn't been able to actually breathe and see the forest for the trees, right. or the trees for the leaves. Yes, <laughs> right. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know what, what would have happened, but I can tell you it would have been more painful. Yes, wow, that's beautiful. Have, is that in your, in your experience, is that what tends to happen when you let go of trying to control everything? Most often when I tend to not, when I tend to control everything, things work out, but they work out painfully. Mm. Sort of like dragging myself across sandpaper. Oh, ouch. <laughs> it works, I get there, but it doesn't feel very good. Yeah, yeah. And what I find is that when I actually open to the mystical, open to what's around me, um, I find that things happen in miraculous ways, mm. unexpected ways. Yeah. And I find like a beauty in it yeah. of like, life is actually for me. Can I actually see wha how it's for me as opposed to why it's doing this to me? Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful insight, yeah. Um, I'm just curious, how many of you have tried to control something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, David, Rick, okay, yeah. Oh, over there, yeah, a few people, yeah. And it, it truly feels, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, because I have done it myself, but it truly feels like the, the wrong thing is going to happen unless I'm in control, right? Unless I'm trying to control it. Something bad or something unwanted is going to happen, or it just won't be, things just won't be right, things won't be the way that I need them to be. And how beautiful it is to let go and see that there are so many options out there that, like the roofer under your nose, you know, that you never would have thought of but if you had not been relaxed and asked for help. There are so many options out there that we don't, that we don't even get to see if we're so busy looking at this myopic lens of our consciousness of what needs to happen, right? In our way, in our time, right? 
God's time is ridiculous. It's either too fast or too slow, in my opinion. <laughs> And it totally reminds me of that quote that, we always, that I always say here about the kingdom of heaven is spread upon the earth, but we do not see it. In Chris's case, the kingdom of heaven was in the body of this contractor, and he couldn't see it until he let go and asked the, other, the head contractor, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and so if I can just comment on what you Please, said. Yeah. You, know, you talked about this myopic view. Yes. And one of the things that I've learned about stress and, and stress is a funny word, right? Because a lot of people say, oh, I'm not under stress, or I manage stress, or something like that. But stress, one thing I've learned through my, um, my illnesses and my health challenges is that stress is actually ever-present, and it's created up here. Mm -hmm. And I am a really good creator of stress. <laughs> I am so good at it. And well, don't brag, Chris. I mean, uh, it's not. <laughs> I'm not here to brag. Wait a minute. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but what I've learned is that when I am under even the slightest bit of stress, I miss the big picture, and I also miss paradoxically, I also miss the detail. <laughs> and so I have this like tunnel vision where I'm scanning, looking for a solution but I actually don't see everything around it. And I also don't see the detail of what's in that picture. And, and it's a weird thing. It's very paradoxical, but it's very, very true. Yeah. That's a, can we take that in for just a minute, that when we're under stress, because I'm going to assume that that is somewhat of a universal principle that applies to all of us. I, I felt, did anybody feel like they were looking in a mirror when he said that, right? So when we're under stress, we miss both the big picture and we miss the details. And again, I can see that in your story about the contractor. There's a big picture that maybe there's somebody in your, in your, in your field of uh, connections that knows what to do. And here's this little detail over here. This guy just you know, calmly working on whatever he was working on in your house. And whoa, he's a roofer. It's amazing. Yeah, missing the big picture and missing the details. And so the thing I really found have found really powerful about heart math is actually a simple understanding of how my body works. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I always say, I wish I'd come with an owner's manual. <laughs> Something where I could look it up and go, oh, I'm feeling this, what does that mean? And so this is actually an easy way and an easy framework to understand what's going on in my body and what to actually do with it. And I don't want to say do about it because it's not about fixing it. It's about actually using it and doing something with it. Mm, that's wonderful. Yeah. It really is the, the core of what we tend to teach in this particular branch of uh, Centers for Spiritual Living in that these, I mentioned this before, but these things that come up are not enemies. You know, if, if, um, if you've read some of the stuff that I've written, it's like it's not about squashing it and making, go, making it go and hating it. It's about doing exactly what you said as um, how, can, how can this be a a portal to greater whatever it is, greater um, peace or greater insight or greater being able to see the big picture as well as the details. Yeah, and, and I, you know, I, I, what I gave you is sort of a very practical physical example of it. Yeah, you know, yeah. A physical manifestation of it. Right. But what I've found through this work as well as other work that I've done is that there's always more to see. Mm -hmm. There's always things that I don't see because I am limited by my beliefs, I'm limited by my chemistry at this moment in time. And so just opening myself up actually allows me to feel a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, I am actually able to feel my emotions so much more now than I could some years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I am able to actually feel trees mm. and feel nature a lot more. And so, it allows for a balance with the universe, balance with life. Then, and it's a doorway. There are other doorways. I'm not saying this is the answer. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it's an answer for those that it resonates with. Mm, that's beautiful. And you know, it's funny because some people would say, if you said, I can feel my emotions more than I used to be able to, some people would say, and that's a good thing. You want to feel your emotions? <laughs> because we're so used to not, not feeling them and thinking that emotions are, you know, certain emotions are bad and putting them away, you know? Yeah. 
have yeah. because I'm scared of my emotions, right? Yeah. It's yeah. like if I get angry, God knows what I'm going to do. I might right. hurt someone. Right. Or if I am like very sad, I won't be able to actually function. Right. Yeah. And, and that's all true. And what I've learned is that emotions flow. So there's an old thing, emotions, energy and motion. Yeah. So emotions actually flow. And when I actually clamp down on them and try and control them, I actually stagnate them and they get stuck in my body. Mm -hmm. And so my belief system is they actually lead to some form of dis-ease, disease or um, health challenges or something like that over years. Yeah. And so for me, the work is to actually allow them to flow and to feel them and to use them as messengers because they are messengers. They, yeah. When I'm angry, often a boundary has been crossed. Yes. Can I actually feel the anger and go down to the bottom and the root of it and be able to identify what it is? And even if I can't, I can just say, I'm angry right now and this too shall pass. Mm, nice, yeah. Yeah, because there's, there's the thing of not wanting to feel the feelings and then there's, in my experience, there's been a layer on top of that of I shouldn't be feeling these feelings, right? right. So these feelings are bad. These feelings, is particularly in spiritual work, like if, if everybody here is involved in spiritual work, as I'm assuming you probably are, you know, I'm, like, I'll just use myself as an example. I'm a minister, so therefore I shouldn't feel this, I shouldn't feel that. The, the one that I've addressed a lot recently is shame. So if I, if I feel shame, it means it is a fact that I have something to be ashamed of. And not only that, I'm ashamed of my shame because I'm a minister and I'm supposed to not have that, right? Am I getting the layers? Yeah. That's yeah. really good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm reminded of what you just said. I'm reminded also of the Dalai Lama. I've heard of times when he's on stage and he will just like break down into sobbing tears and it'll last for like a minute and then he'll get back up. He'll just proceed. Yeah. And it's just part of his flow. Yeah. It's not something that has to mean a lot. Right. Right. That's beautiful. Same with the giggling, you know? Yeah. He's a giggler too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you've, you've said a lot about what it is. I'm wondering if there's a piece of the how that you could share with us. Sure. What, what I'd like to do is just take you through um, one of the simple techniques. But what I will tell you before that is that our bodies are fascinating because our emotions and our body chemistry actually shows up in how we breathe. And when things are connected like that in our body, you can work with how you breathe to manage and work with the chemicals in your body. And so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a breathing exercise and then I'm going to ask you to recall a situation where you felt gratitude or appreciation or joy or love. And so I'm going to give everyone about 30 seconds to think of a situation. And it might have been where you were with a loved one or where you were with a pet or maybe you were just out in nature or listening to music. Okay, now what's powerful about this technique is you can do this with your eyes open or your eyes closed. So I'll let you do it whichever way you want. So just go ahead and place a piece of your attention on the center of your chest in the area of your heart. And just imagine that you're breathing in and out of through your heart. And as you breathe, just breathe a little bit slower and a little bit deeper than you normally would, perhaps to a count of four or five for each inhale and four or five for each exhale. Think of that time when you felt appreciation or gratitude or joy or love. And 
just allow that emotion to fill you. Okay, now go ahead and open your eyes. Just notice how you feel now, after maybe two minutes. How many of you feel calmer? How many of you feel more receptive? How many of you feel more engaged with life? There you go. So um, this is something that you can do while sitting in traffic, <laughs> <laughs> waiting for that red light that is keeping you from your appointment, from your very important appointment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or standing in line at the grocery store where the person has 25 things that they want to return <laughs> they're right in front of you. <laughs> or any situation. It could be going into an important meeting because when things are really important, I care a lot and I get really nervous or anxious mm -hmm. because I want it to go right. So you can just do this technique before going in. And what I find is that when I do that, things always go better. Mm. I can't tell you how they go better, they just go better. Mm. Um, you can do it right after something happens. So somebody startles you or like, let's say somebody cuts you off. You can actually just breathe and pull over and then go ahead and do this exercise for a minute. And that will dump out all of those wonderful stress chemicals that just flooded your body to protect you and you can basically then engage with life. Mm -hmm. And you'll probably drive more safely and you'll probably see the traffic better and you'll probably be happier when you get to wherever you're going than if you curse them mm -hmm. and accelerate and rush because this slowed you down. Mm. Is that what you did with the roofer situation? Um, yes, I did this with a roofer situation. Uh-huh, uh-huh, cool. It's, it's really interesting. Um, you know, I was, I was thinking a bit, and we're going we're gonna to close in just a minute, but I was thinking a bit as, as you were speaking about the, um, the, let's say, oppositional nature of a lot of the issues in public right now in the world, you know, when you turn on the news or when you turn on, uh, even on my, I've shared before that my um, internet feed has a lot of things and, you know, nobody can figure out what side I'm on, so I get things from both, both sides of many issues. And um, I wonder if... What's your opinion about this? If, if I were to look at something and I start judging the fact that it's on my thing, if I, we, were to simply do this breathing technique, what impact do you think that might have? Um, I think I, ha I know, but I'll give you an example okay. based on results. Okay. So um, heart math is interesting because they don't present this as a spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. And part of what I want to do when I teach is I want to actually bring in the mysticism and the spirituality mm -hmm. into it. Mm -hmm. What they do is they go into corporations and they go into the military and they go into first responders and police departments. And so they cut out all of the, the spirituality because it's just not accepted easily in those um, areas. And so you talked about oppositional nature. So mm -hmm. um, large companies have introduced this where they'll do this as a one or two minute practice mandated before every meeting. Wow. And one of the very large companies actually measured the time that meetings took. And meeting times got cut in half. Literally in half. And the reason is that people are more receptive to hearing other people's opinions. And they're not stuck in their my way or the highway positions. 
And so what it does is it actually allows us to see the other person as a human being and to see that their point has some validity. It might not be my perspective, but it's their perspective. And it allows them to acknowledge that. Mm. So it actually helps with relationships too. That's wonderful, thank you. So, and if, and if we're doing it for somebody that we don't even know, we can see that person as a person and maybe not be quite so reactive so that when the person comes into our purview that we do know that shares that opinion, we're actually willing to see that person as a person as well. I would hope so, though. Some people, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding about And seen. No, <laughs> it's okay. No, Chris, I just want to put up the, the, uh, the flyer for your, um, or the, the information for your class. It's on Zoom. It's priceless pricing. Everybody's welcome. You don't have to be, you don't have to be a member of the church or anything like that. Um, there's information about it back in the social hall. And Chris, will you stand back there for a little bit? We've sure, got a spot yeah, for you. I'll, yeah. I'll stand back there if you have any questions. Yeah. And also, I want to say that my... My intent is to actually make it a connecting experience. Uh, it isn't going to be, be me sitting in front of the screen talking to you. <laughs> it's, it's actually hopefully going to be a connecting experience um, where you're going to have some interaction with other people. And so what I would ask you to do is come with uh, the ability to turn on your cameras, turn on your microphones, because uh, you're going to be asked to interact. Mm. And if you don't want to, you can opt out. But um, but I want it to be connecting. Mm -hmm, that's great. Yeah, the peer-to-peer -peer learning thing is beautiful. Thank you so much. You, you know, uh, you must have heart math to before this because you did a fantastic experience, a fantastic job, and Thank it's you. so beautiful. Thank you so much, Chris. Let's give him some Thank love. Thank you, Bonnie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, let's do a prayer. Hi, Chris. Okay, here we go. So just turning within, we resonate in that beautiful, beautiful spot that we know is divine, that is more than a spot. It is the infinite spot. It is everywhere. It is infinity. It is awareness. It is consciousness. This anchor, this place that is an anchor that is totally free, that is a total paradox, this amazing thing that is, and that is who we are. We celebrate that together in this sacred service. And together we connect with that and we know that the divine presence pours itself into us and through us as we pour ourselves into it. That it is this beautiful circulation of energy that is so powerful and so rich and so divine and so filled with never ending wisdom and never ending opportunities to be that chickpea, to, to work on ourselves and to grow into this power, into this power and this love and this humility and this exaltation and this grace that is the divine. And so I give thanks for our time together. I know that every single person here has been lifted up in one way or another, and that the, the wisdom and the love that we have received through the grace of this community ripples out into our individual lives and blesses everyone and circles around the world, around the cosmos to bless everything, even those things that we call inanimate like the stars and the sun and all of these things. All of these things are blessed by our spiritual work together. I am so grateful for this time. I'm so grateful for our transformation, our shared transformation. I'm so grateful for the people that said yes to coming here today. Whether you're here to serve or here to listen, your mere presence is, is an act of service. And so I'm grateful for that, so grateful. And I bless all paths to God churches, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, fundamentalists, atheists, agnostics, anyone I haven't mentioned, I bless all paths, for all of these paths are a blessing. I bless our bodies, I bless our hearts, I bless math, I bless everything, I bless every single thing in the world, trusting and knowing that it is good. And with a heart that is so filled with gratitude, I say thank you, spirit, thank you, love, and I release these words into the divine mystery, and together we say, and so it is. Namaste. Thank you, Bonnie and Chris. Um, you know, one of the many things that I love about our center is that we get to experience so many wonderful teachers. And it's such a pleasure seeing you, Chris, again, and Meenal, you know, your home. Mm -hmm. um, and. You know, I, when I stand up here and, and tell you that I feel such gratitude for your continued support, 
I truly mean it. I help out with counting the offering after the service. And believe me, I can feel your generosity. I can feel your love and your compassion. And that just blesses me. And I really wanted to share that with you this morning because many of your gifts are not identified. <laughs> and I would love for you to contemplate truly joining our family. And one way you can do that is that Jennifer and the staff have put a little offering envelope behind the seats. And, you know, if you choose to donate in cash, you can put it in here and put your name and the amount. And then we know you. We can honor you. And we can recognize your blessing. So I just hope that you'll sit with that and see if that speaks to you. I know that it was a real change for me when I started doing that. Um, it was a turning point, and I was part of a bigger family. And I just want to offer that to you this morning as we prepare our offering. Thanks, Lynn. And so in that place of gratitude, I invite you to place your offering over your heart and repeat after me. We trust, trust in, in spirit. We trust in spirit. <laughs> Love is a giver and receiver of all that we are. Love is the giver and receiver of all that we are. We offer this gift. We offer this gift. It is an outer expression of our inner abundance and compassion. It is an outer expression of our inner abundance and compassion. Our gifts bless many. Our gifts bless many. And return to us multiplied in miraculous ways. And return to us multiplied in miraculous ways so that we may give again. So that we may give again. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you. There's a hundred things I wish I said some pages wish I'd read it. I didn't, I must live with that. Cause I'm trying to never look back. I don't waste time with should have been. Played and lost, sometimes I win. Luck and love have escaped, but they'll be back one of these days. Cause I think it's time. I'm knocking on the gates of change. And I'm learning that they open from inside. Good love comes to those who wait and nothing needed ever comes too late. A one by one let tomorrows come and say your chows to everyone. Watch the kids dance on the beach. That life is within reach But you want this and I want that Where we are is where we're at It's our choice to live in fear And hear the voices that we hear And I think it's time I'm knocking on the gates of change And I'm learning that they open from inside Good love comes to those who wait And nothing needed ever comes to It's never too Till a fat lady sings and you're down on your knees saying how you believe, no. Till the writing's in stone and the fire below and just can't wait, it's never too late. The herb of love's an action of a source but we don't sow, they reap in court. And all those things we work to get Become your lawyer's new Corvette But things are better next time around Wish we knew then, but we know now It's better love and leave, they say Cause nothing ventured, nothing gained And I think it's time I'm knocking on the gates of change And I'm learning that they open from inside Good love comes to those who wait Nothing needed ever comes too late There's a hundred things I wish
wish I'd said some pages I wish I'd read I didn't, I must live with that Cause I'm trying to never look back I don't waste time with should've been Played and lost, sometimes I win Luck and love have escaped But they'll be back one of these days Cause it's never too late It's never too late Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it's part of the silent auction. We're still looking for um, donations for, of baskets for our silent auction. We've been talking about donating baskets, which you're all encouraged to do, and there's information about that out there as well. Um, but the, the silent auction is paired with a concert by our friend Ray Davis. How many of you have heard Ray Davis perform, right? What do you think of him? Let's see a show of applause. Yeah. <laughs> He's, He's an amazing performer, and we, um, through a series of wonderful events and suggestions from the congregation, we were able to couple it with a benefit for Maui. Many of you are, are aware of what's happened in Maui recently. This is a little hard to see. I can't really see it very well, but um, it's, the gist of it is that we're going to give the proceeds of the concert to the Maui YMCA, and we are um, supporting the resilience and the passion of Maui, uh, supporting the ohana that brings, forth, brings them through the crisis. The, the, we're, the, we're giving them to the YMCA, which is a suggestion from our friend Lucky Lynch, because the YMCA really donates every dollar to help people that are in need. <laughs> yes. On the, uh, I think it's the 10th, we're going to have Hawaiian Lays that we're giving you. That was a lovely uh, idea from one of our members of our concert team, and we're going to give you Hawaiian Lays, and then you can lay it forward. <laughs> See why I hesitate to say that. It sounds a little odd. <laughs> Give it to someone as you invite them to come to the concert. <laughs> and then when they come to the concert, they can make a donation. It's free. We just make a donation. We give that money to Maui, so we pay it forward. And we're giving some funds to Ray, too, because a lot of musicians really struggle during the pandemic. So we are paying Ray as well. So that is raying it forward. If you've got other ideas about how to promote this beautiful concert, you know, we're putting it in the, in the papers and press releases and all that stuff, let us know, and let's see what we can do to, to get a really, really good group here, okay? Thank you in advance. That's Ray and his wife, Lori. Thank you, the concert team that we, we met on, on uh, Friday night. The auction team is running the silent auction. Thank you, Lucky Lynch, for your suggestion about the YMCA. And anybody that I might have missed, thank you, all of you that I might have missed, but also all of you who are going to lay it forward Ray it forward and pay it forward. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. All right, let us pray. Mm. So we turn within and trust that this time together has been so beautiful and so wonderful. What a rich community we have. Just rich in wisdom and love and generosity and graciousness and that strong desire to assist other people with what we have and what we know and who we are. I just rest in that and know that it follows us all as we go our separate ways and ripple this message of goodness and kindness and love and integrity and wisdom out into the world, that it blesses all of our relationships, it blesses all of our friendships, it even blesses the people that, that disturb us, the people that get in our way in traffic, as Chris was talking about. It blesses everyone. It blesses everyone. And so we are so grateful to become part of that blessing. I am grateful for this time together, grateful for everyone who said yes to the spiritual center this morning. And with a heart that is filled with gratitude, I release these words into divine wisdom and love, into the mystery. And together we say, and so it is.